The Rome Italian Open has reached the business stage and has created a lot of interesting headlines. First, I want to talk about Serena Williams' loss to Nadia Podoroska a few days ago. Now, seeing that it was her first match in like two and a half months, Serena really didn't play that bad. She just played the big points wrong. Podoroska played by far her best match since that Rolling Girls run last year where she made the semifinals. But she clearly couldn't sustain this level though as she's already out of the tournament losing to Petra Martic yesterday. Once again, I thought that Serena played well from what I saw and the stats I believe were pretty positive. She had 35 winners, if I'm not mistaken, to 33 unforced errors, which shows you that she really did not play that bad. I do want to give credit to Puerto Rosca, she did play well once again. However, there were some things that Serena I feel needs to work on and there are some things that I really think prevented her from winning this match and at least from winning a set. Oftentimes, her defensive shots made it easy for Podoroska to attack and dictate with that forehand. And despite Serena, I, think, I thought that she moved well. A lot of the times when on the defensive, she offered up kind of weak replies, which sent her on the run even more and put the odds in Podoroska's favor um, on a lot of those rallies, neutral ball rallies. And also the biggest thing I feel was to serve. Williams' first serve percentage has honestly been noticeably off all year, as in Australia against Naomi Osaka especially, she struggled to get those free points through the first serve. And the same thing happened here, as she had to hit far too many second serves, which allowed Nadia a lot of chances at breaking, which she really shouldn't have had, to be honest. Originally, I thought that this would be her like Auckland 2017 tournament, where she would lose early in Rome but do really well in the French. But it's clear that she really needs match play because this is a match that Serena honestly would have won if she were more match tough. Serena said it best herself in her post-match press conference and even revealed that she'll consider playing another event before the start of Roland Garros. Um, you know, it's tough to have a first match on clay, so um, it was definitely kind of good to, to go the distance and to try to be out there, but um, clearly I can do legions better so i just gotta get there maybe i do need a few more matches so i'm gonna try to figure that out with my team and my coach and see like what we're what uh what we would like to do but um yeah i just feel like it's different i've been training for months but i feel it's definitely different on clay to make that last adjustment to my surprise, Serena did indeed sign up for an additional tournament ahead of the French, accepting a wild card alongside Sister Venus for the Emilia Romagna Open in Parma, Italy. Williams' coach Patrick Moronoglu made an official statement about her entry saying, Change of plans. Serena hasn't been competing for a while, and we want to get as many matches under our belt as possible before Rolling Girls, so we're adding the Emilia Romagna Open to our schedule. We'll be back in action next week. At first, I was a bit apprehensive about Serena playing another event this close to the French due to her possibly worsening the Achilles are back, but I realized that Parma actually starts very soon on the 16th actually and ends a week before Roland Garros, so she still has time to recover after that event. I definitely think that this was a smart move on part of her team as I think that she'll get those necessary extra match reps that she needs and she'll be more confident on those finishes as she said that she wasn't in that press conference against Podoroska. The Palmer field actually looks really good to be honest as it includes the Williams sisters, Madison Keys, Sloane Stevens, Coco Golf, Jessica Pegula, among others. Moreover, it seems as Venus and Serena might be playing doubles in Parma as their names appear on the entry list for the tournament's Wikipedia site. Before I move on, I want to congratulate Serena on now officially playing 1,000 matches. I know it wasn't the result that she wanted, but to still hold 851 wins is amazing, and all my respect and admiration is towards you. Another big debuté story I want to talk about is Simona Halep as she suffered a very scary injury during her opening round match against Angelique Kerber. Halep was actually leading the German 6-1-3 all when she received treatment and ultimately retired due to a left calf tear. Currently, we don't know much or of whether this will indefinitely affect her chances of playing Roland Garros, but the Romanian did offer a statement to her fans updating them some more of the injury. Unfortunately, an ultrasound has revealed that I have a tear in my left calf. I will get an MRI tomorrow to understand the injury in more detail, but at the moment, we are unsure of recovery time. 
I'm so disappointed to end my tournament in Rome like this, but I will do everything I can to take care of the injury and be back as soon as possible. Thanks so much for your support and I'll keep you posted on my progress. I really do feel for Simona and her fans because nobody likes to see a player injured, especially so close to a slam. I hope that somehow the MRI results show something positive and that she will be ready for Roland Garros. Back to the action in Rome, almost the entire WTA field of top players is gone. We're currently in the quarterfinal stage and just four players in the top 20 remain. Row number one, Ash Barty continues her excellent run, getting good wins over Shvedova and Kudermertova especially, both winning these matches in straight sets. She now gets Coco Golf, who is having a very impressive week herself, beating Putin Seva, Sakri, and now Madrid champion Sabalenka to reach the last eight. Coco is currently 32 in the live rankings, and if she beats Barty, she's basically guaranteed to be a seed in Roland Garros. I'm very proud of Coco, her game seems to be really coming together, and people have been very hard on her, criticizing her a lot, saying that she's overhyped, but greatness does take time, and it seems like she is really starting to make those big steps. Another American making big steps is Jessica Pegula, who reaches the quarters after taking out Alexandrova 2-4. Pegula beat Naomi Osaka in the second round 7-6-6-2, which I thought didn't make a lot of noise, perhaps due to Naomi's poor clay court reputation. Still, I had Osaka advancing because while Pegula has had a really great season, clay court isn't her forte at all. However, she told WT Insider that she has been changing her clay court positioning this week, which seems to be making all the difference. Jessica next gets Petra Mardich as the two will battle for their first WT 1000 semifinals. The next quarterfinal match is between Iga Svantec and Elena Svitolina. Iga actually had the tougher battle in the round of 16, having to save multiple match points over Barbora Krachikova to win 3-6, 7-6, 7-5. Svitolina, on the other hand, actually had a dominant performance, defeating Garbina Muguruza 4-2. This is honestly an upset because despite being the higher ranked player, Svitolina hadn't even won a set in their previous three encounters. Now the last quarter to observe is between Karolina Pliskova and Yelena Ostapenko. Pliskova took out Russians Verizona Reva 7663, while Ostapenko came back to send Kerber packing. 466364. Lastly, moving over to the men's side, Rafael Nadal and Denis Shapovalov gave us an extremely drama filled match, which saw the Spaniard coming back from numerous holes to ultimately win 366476. The Spaniard saved two match points at 6 5 in the third, but was honestly lucky to even win the second set. Rafa was down 6-3-3 love love 30 and also faced a break point in that game. Also, Dennis was leading 3-1-40 love but hit four backhand errors to be broken. The backhand was honestly the difference maker here as the dog started to direct more of his serves and ground strokes to that wing which elicited more errors. He then started to gain more confidence and momentum and started to hit with more conviction which ultimately paid off in the end. Nadal said that this win would give him confidence later on and he definitely needs it facing Zverev next who beat Nishikori in 3 sets. The German has won their last 3 meetings and in straight sets so Rafa has got to step it up if he wants that semi-final spot. Another intriguing quarterfinal matchup is between Novak Djokovic and Stefano Tsitsipas, who will play for the first time since their event for Roland Garros semifinal last year. Both players looked very good today, beating Davidovich Fakina and Berrettini in straight sets respectively. Now a very unexpected quarterfinal matchup is Riley Opelka and Federico Del Bonis. Opelka scored a good win over Aslan Karatsev, who took out Medvedev in the second round. Del Bonis beat Felix Oje Aliassime, who beat Diego Schwarzman in the second round as well. The last semi is between Andrei Rublev and Lorenzo Senego. Rublev got the solid win over Bautista Agu, winning 4-4. Four four. Senega, however, had a much more difficult route to the last eight, defeating Dominic Team 6-4-6-7-7-6 in 3 hours and 45 minutes. Team had multiple openings to win the match, most notably when he served 4 at 5-4 in the third. However, as Senego did against Malfis when he was cramping allegedly, continued to fight and got the job done to the delight of the Italian crowd. That's all for this video and I would talk more about the matchups but I've been so busy lately due to college and much of this video is actually supposed to be discussed and uploaded days ago but better late now than never.
I will be talking more extensively about the quarterfinal results and our preview of the semifinals in my next video, which should be out later today. So make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when it's posted. Also, follow our Instagram, GS Tennis News Today, as I'm starting to be more active on there, so I'll be able to provide you all with tennis news more efficiently and more fast. That is it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.